Distinguished future physicians, welcome to Stomp on Step 1, the only free video series that helps you study more efficiently by focusing on the highest yield material. In this video, I'm going to be covering bias and validity and giving you a foundation for a couple later videos in this section. This is the sixth video in my BIOS deck section, and I would suggest you watch the next couple videos after this because they're all very much related to bias and validity. You can see here in the top right corner that I give validity and in the next slide bias a high yield rating of one. The high yield rating is a rough estimate on a scale from one to 10 of the importance of different topics for step one. If you wanna learn more about that, you can check out my website. But you'll notice validity and bias only have a high yield rating of one. That's because you're unlikely to see questions that directly asks you about validity and bias. They're not going to ask you about, you know, the definition of validity and bias. But you really need to understand what they are to understand other concepts. So while there's not many questions directly about validity, if you don't understand what validity is, you'll struggle with other stuff. Validity is how well a test or study answers the question it was supposed to answer. It's just how good or how valid something is. Now, when we're talking about laboratory tests, you would use things like sensitivity and specificity to measure validity of that test. But in most cases, what we're talking about when we use the term validity is referring to research. How valid are the results from that study? You can break down validity into internal and external validity. Internal validity is how well the results you have represent what's actually going on with the sample. External validity is how well your results apply to other situations. For example, how well do the results you'll, you found from that study population apply to the overall population? Bias is non-random deviation from the truth. Non-random means it's directional. In research studies, bias would be problems with the study design or execution that cause you to consistently get distorted results. This means that the results you have are consistently skewed from what's actually going on. In most cases, this means you're going to show a stronger association between what you're studying. So, you know, a stronger association between the treatment and the outcome or the risk factor in the outcome. This is non-random, which means it's going to be different than the low precision you'd see with a small sample size. Bias is different than that because it means something is fundamentally wrong with what you're doing with your study and you're getting results that are consistently different than the truth. A study with a lot of bias cannot be corrected with a larger sample size because it doesn't matter how many more patients you add on to the study, you're always going to get this average that's consistently skewed one way or the other. High bias means low validity, and the opposite is also true. Now that we know what validity and bias are, it's important to outline what would be an ideal research study. Now in most cases, Setting up an ideal research study is just not possible, but it's good to understand fundamentally what an ideal research study would look like. So the first thing on this list would be that the sample population in the study is similar to the overall population of interest. This would mean there's high external validity or high generalizability. So the second thing on this list is you want the groups to be close to identical at the beginning of the study, except for whatever variable you're trying to isolate. Say you're studying a treatment, you want the control group and the treatment group to be very similar at the beginning. When both groups are similar at the beginning, there's less chance for confounding. The next thing on this list is you want a low loss to follow up. So loss to follow up just means for some reason you're having patients not finish the study. They may move away from the city where the study is being conducted. They may change their phone number. So you're not able to contact them. You're not able to get all of the data you need. You've got missing data points. The reason this can create an issue is if you have similar groups at the beginning of the study, but now you're having people from either group not continue to the end, now you could have different groups at the end. That, that brings in another possibility for confounding, especially if one group or the other is losing many more people. Because chances are the people who are lost to follow up are going to be different than the rest of the group. For example, if your treatment works really well, 
you may have all the people who are so healthy they don't feel like participating anymore because the treatment works so well. So they may drop out. Or you could have people who have really bad outcomes and they're dropping out of the study because they feel like the study isn't helping them at all. And when they drop out and they all have something in common, then you're losing a big chunk of your data and adding bias. Additionally, you want the different groups to be treated the same by the researchers. Again, this applies to keeping the groups similar. It doesn't matter how similar groups are at the beginning of the study if over the course of the study one group is treated completely different than the other. This might be the number of clinic visits each group has or how much time they spend with the attendings. But those things can change a lot and add bias if they're not similar between both groups. And finally you want all patients to be compliant. Let's say you've got a placebo and a treatment group. If your placebo group is going out and getting treatment elsewhere or your treatment group isn't actually taking the treatment, now you're making the two groups more and more similar. And that can create issues when you try to compare the two groups because you're comparing them based on what they were assigned to, but if they weren't being compliant, then their assignment doesn't really matter because they didn't follow that. That brings us to the end of this video. If you find any mistakes or typos, please comment at the bottom of the page so I can fix it. I'm hardly an expert on any of the topics I cover. I'm just a regular med student like you, trying to help out some of my fellow colleagues, so there are bound to be some corrections that need to be made.